and welcome back to Dram's Four Dummies. I, of course, am always the numero uno dummy because I know nothing. But I'm started this channel for some reason anyway, even though I don't know nothing. And if you watch the videos, you know I don't know nothing. But that's what we do it for is for um, the majority of us dummies that don't really know a whole lot. We just like it. So we're here doing this stuff together and having fun. Sorry, I'm turning down my... My black crows over there are just ripping and rolling, man. They got crazy after that intro. So, let's just dive right into this awesome bottle I picked up today. I just released my 13th Colony uh, cask strength uh, review. And the gist of, a lot of the gist of the 13th Colony story right now is what do they disclose? What don't they disclose? Why does it seem like it's kind of a mystery? They've kind of adjusted their their labeling to be a little bit more transparent but still not really transparent and people just at this point i think my point in the video was hey man be whatever you are right you're a non-distilling uh, producer you're a blender you're a you know what you, you contract is still with somebody you know whatever and, and i know that sometimes you can't say all the details but we i think in this world now are so used to blends and different finishers and different people that buy MGP juice and put a, a good label on it and, and sell it and at a high level, right? Penelope, it's, it's, it's MGP, but it's really good. I mean, MGP is good, but they do it at a high level. And then other people buy younger MGP and do different finishing experiments. And, you know, everyone kind of knows for the most part who they are, what they're doing. And it's a lot of fun, I think, for people just to go, what can be done with the different mash bills? What can be done with different finishes or, or blends or whatever? So, to, but to, to say that we're making, producing uh, this stuff and we look at our still and all these things, and the reality is we're buying it and blending it like a bunch of other people, just be who you are. I mean, Barrel King, right? He, right here in, the old, in old Bourbon, Missouri, appropriately named, is, is just knocking it out of the park with super high level um, uh, blends of, of all kinds of different barrels. And then they'll take some of those blends and they'll throw them in a secondary, uh, uh, maybe a used barrel, and, you know, a stag barrel or whatever. They just are doing crazy stuff. And it's like that mad scientist kind of thing that people are doing now and having a lot of fun with. You know, uh, you, know you got Sean and Dan, uh, the bourbon junkies up there doing ever north now uh and do and doing the same thing contract distilling blending uh finishing uh and being very transparent and showing videos and just you know, like here's what we're doing and we're just having fun with the juice and seeing what comes out of it you know so i think we all just want to see that and i think that there is no better example and it's been doing it forever or ever but a lot of years is the Barrel Bourbon Company, right? They've never ever tried to do, be anything, say they're anything more than than uh, blenders, and they're trying to show people that taking different juice from different places, blending them with the different age statements and mash bills, like how can we create um, a bottle and a profile that's greater than the sum of its parts, right? So I've, I've always loved them, and I think that's what, what's happened in all the mix and all the unicorn chasing and all the new hotnesses and the 13th colonies and the whatever, is that barrels kind of been a little bit forgotten. And I think they know they have this issue too, where they, they do everything at such a high level, but everything kind of starts to literally look the same. Their labels all looked the same for so long, and it would just have a little 32 or 33 or 34 for the, for the blend number. Um, that, and then they were disclosing information, but there was, they weren't disclosing all the information. Or, you know, it, it was, it was some things a little bit kind of, and I think some of that was, might have just been on their part thinking, our label can only carry so much information without being very busy or tiny print, so we're going to show the highlights. But as people have gotten more and more into the idea of these blends and, and understanding that and wanting to know the science, wanting to know the makeup and the mash bills and, and the age statements and all that stuff and where, where you know what part of the country is it coming from, Barrel has stepped up very recently and started to put out more information on their labels. And if you've seen their brand new label that's of, of the batch that's getting ready to come out, I want to say it's 39, 36, I can't remember. You know, the, the batch number is huge, so it, it stands out a little bit. And so if you see two sitting next to each other, you'd be very, it'd be very clear that these are two different batches. 
but then they're breaking down very specifically the percentages of each mash bill, what each mash bill is, then what that becomes the derived total mash bill kind of of this bottle, what states they're coming from. I just love, I love their transparency. So anyway, so, so if, if you haven't heard that Barrel has put out this bottle, Foundation, um, with a five-year age statement at 100 proof, and the intention of this bottle is that this is going to be on the shelf all the time. It's going to be not like a batch, not a one-time, got to grab it or you miss it, that this is something that they can consistently, it's always going to be a blend of a lot of different barrels and, and types and mash bills, but something that they can consistently, a profile they can get to, that you can basically have, find this, any, you know, you, you, you kill this bottle, you go back to your store, you pick up another one. I'm excited to try this. Every day, Barrel Bourbon Company, they want it to live on your shelf all the time, Sipper, that has a five-year age statement, a $50 price tag, and uh, but a bunch of, bunch of juice from all over the country in it, all the way from five years to nine years. Yeah, it's it, it's really nice. Um, you're getting all the baking spice. <clears throat> you you know, at, at, at first blush, I kind of was like, I mean, you're kind of in a stone fruit world. You're kind of, it's not super, it's not citrusy by any stretch, but we're definitely uh, in a in a more bold fruit than than the apple, right? Um, you you got the you getting the oak in there you're getting the caramel in there so it, it it it's very traditional but also definitely on the brighter punchier a little bit spicier side of traditional uh, but it's really good and again what I love is uh, to me a quality pour if I has a great nose with a lot of depth I, I love the nose of things first and foremost. But that every time you come back, it's different. And something like, again, I keep throwing back as the most recent in my memory, right? But something like the 13th Colony didn't really do that. It was good and solid. It was really good in the nose. But whatever it was giving you was just kind of giving you that every time. And that's fine to kind of get in a pocket and stay in it. But it's what, it, what it tells me if the nose is different each time you smell it is that it's, there's complexity within this, within the pour, right? And of course, knowing how many different barrels and ages and states and just, you know, mash bills there are in here, it's not surprising. But let's get a score on it. It's just getting richer and sweeter as it sits in here and it warms up a little bit. Um, again, my second pour of this will probably be even even richer. So I kind of shortchanged it by giving, uh, giving the neck pour its review, but... It's like if you want to just kind of be out here and do an easy an easy sniff, you can stay in the in traditional and the smooth and the caramel. And then if you want to start kind of diving more in the glass and uh, you know inhaling stronger and pull more of that spice and more of that punchiness, it's almost like you can sort of choose your own adventure with this, which is a lot of fun. I'm gonna go with my eight. That's an eight nose. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. That is really good. That uh, that drinks. It smells a little hotter than a hundred proof. It does not drink hotter than a hundred proof. It drinks right on the money. It's smooth. It's easy. It's rich. It's viscous. But the sweetness, so it's it's rich and viscous. So that and that depth and that that the caramels and the and the oaks come through right away. But the sweetness from the nose still it comes in there too. So we're gonna talk about layers, complexity. You're, it's not just one note. Lots of things are happening at one time, but it's not happening in a aggressive way. It's not pop rocking and, and popping in the mouth. It's not zigging and zagging all the place to make you kind of have to you know drink it a certain way or keep up with you know kind of pay attention to how you how, how what you're doing. You can just bring us in, drink it easy. It's gonna drink easy, but it's gonna give you different layers within that nice sip. Uh, which is which is a lot of fun. Mm. That might even be a bigger, a better nose.
Okay. So now I'm starting to feel like on that drink that it, the palate itself right there might be a little bit weaker or simple. I don't want to say simple. Weaker, less complex than I would love. I like it to sort of do a little bit more. It feels rich and viscous and, and, and satisfying. But it's but I think where I was on the first drink where I was kind of going, it's doing a lot of things is the is is back palette. So it's still palette, but into the finish. And I think the finish on this it might be it might be its strongest point. And so when you book in that strong nose with a strong palate, and then this sort of easy drink and center, right? That creates a pretty a pretty accessible, which is what they want to be everyday type drinker that you can give to your friends and family. But let me I don't want to give the breakdown yet. That's but that's where I'm heading. I think I think that this is going to be a home run for Barrel at this moment. Let me get a score on this though. Okay, I'm going seven on the palate just for now. I'm gonna I'm running out of juice, so I won't have a second pass. But I'm gonna on this last you know drink where I'm really thinking about the finish. I'm gonna kind of try to put it all together for us. All right, so here's what we have at this moment. I'm going to kind of put a little asterisk on it. I've got this as a 7.7 .7 bottle. Eight nose, seven palate, eight finish. I kind of, I, I could pour more juice. I'm not going to right now. It's the neck pour. I'm just going to let it go where it is. I think that 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 nose could actually be a little bit better than that, and I think this next pour of it, when I have it, might open up a little bit more and be an 8.5 to a 9 even. The palette, I'm kind of feeling like I, I could see it not moving a lot. It could shift a half point or two. The finish, same thing. It could kind of go up or down a half point. 7.7 .7 for me is not a top shelfer. So I don't think that this is a top shelf bourbon, but that's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to make this a middle shelf Every day, you can drink it straight, you can mix it and not feel bad to pay $50 for it. You can share it with your friends and family. And I feel like they've just knocked it out of the park. So 878, that's a 77. Um, that 13th colony was a 7.8. Paid $100 and had to sit, sit, you know, had to put it on the calendar to like make sure I got in for the, in that 10 minute window before it sold out and buy it. This is something that in theory you can walk in and just find on your shelf and not have any stress, strain, anxiety, and get it for about half price. And it's the same store, essentially. And depending on what you're into, this is, I mean, this has got a more layered and more complex nose. This has got a more layered and complex finish. Uh, it's maybe a little easier drinking on the palate. I don't know. I would say, again, pay attention. If, you have, if you've kind of forgotten about Barrel for a while, get back to, get back to them. They're, they're just doing what they do. They're just locked in. They're not trying to do bells and whistles, and they're not trying to do clickbait, and they're not trying to, you know, have be the hot the hot thing, the hot unicorn that you're chasing. They're just trying to do a good, great thing consistently, and I feel like we all need to be paying more attention to these guys and stop chasing the other weird, shiny objects, right? Go get the thing that's on the shelf. Get the thing that's priced right. Get the thing that knows what they're doing, and... Let's let, let the other stuff go, because more often than not, the other stuff is just noise. It just is. That's what I got for you. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for uh, letting the cats interrupt us, the, the wife interrupt us, um, the, the music, the Black Crows were crazy at the beginning. Like, whatever part of this ends up in the mix. Thanks for being here for all of that. Um, love you guys. Love what you're doing. Hopefully you're subscribing. Hopefully you're sharing this with your other dummy friends. Hopefully you're thinking about being a patron and, and supporting this even more. If you're doing that, I really love you. But either way, you're awesome. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Bye. It's very bright. It's very... lessons learned.